Hi everyone! Welcome to Best Recipes with Sharon. This recipe is for a Polish kuziki. This is a slightly sweet crisp pastry that's made out of dough that has been shaped into thin twisted ribbons or it looks like a bow tie or angel wings and it's deep fried and lightly dusted with powdered sugar. And I've made mine with a slight hint of orange zest and lemon zest. I've also added a little bit of brandy. Apparently you can fry them in any kind of vegetable oil, but traditionally they were done in lard. So that's what I'm doing today. So as you can see, a little bit of prep time, getting the zest ready. And then I'll take and slice a piece of the orange and a piece of the lemon for decorating after. The zest adds an extra special fresh taste to it. So alright, let's get started. You'll need three large eggs and separate the yolks from the whites. You'll only be using the yolks in this recipe and you'll place them in a medium sized bowl. Then I add one generous tablespoon of sugar. Using a handheld mixer, beat that for one minute. Then start with adding four tablespoons of sour cream. Next add half a teaspoon of vanilla and half a teaspoon of lemon zest. Also, half a teaspoon of orange zest. Then a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And I only added about one teaspoon of rum. You want just enough to add a little extra flavor and not overpower it. Then add two cups of flour. And when you're measuring your flour, measure it a little on the scant side. You can always add a little more flour as you go along or while you're rolling it out. A little bit easier than trying to add a little bit more liquid. But if it does seem a little stiff, you can add a little bit of whipping cream or even a little bit more of the sour cream if you needed to, just to make it pliable and ready to roll out. And then you go ahead and you roll it until it's really thin as thin as you can get it to go. As you can see it's a stretchy dough here and it kind of bounces back at you a little bit so you just keep rolling and rolling and rolling until you get it to the consistency that you want it to be and how thin you like it. It needs to be as thin as possible so probably about an eighth of an inch because that's what creates the crispy type pastry and it will puff up a bit when you're actually frying it in the oil. Then you take a sharp knife and cut it into strips like this and you can make them whatever size you want them to be but roughly one by four inch seems to be about the size that works the best. Using your sharp knife you'll be cutting a slit in the middle of each strip and that slit needs to be oh an inch or an inch and a half and you'll see why in a minute why you would want to have it large enough. So next you would take each strip and you would pull one end through the slit to create a twisted appearance. This dough is fairly forgiving, it's stretchy. So you can pull or twist it and not have it break on you too easily. So it's fairly easy to shape. Now turn your stove on high heat and place an older pan on the top of the stove for doing your frying in and add a couple of pounds of lard to that pot. And this will start to melt right away and you'll need to stay close by and have a thermometer so that you can measure the temperature. And traditionally they use lard, so that is what I'm using today. But if you choose to, you can use canola oil or vegetable oil. It will make a difference on the flavor though. So we have these pastries ready to fry up now. They've been shaped fairly nicely. Some are a bit longer, some are a little shorter, that's okay. When you place it in the lard, it will take a different shape and you can't totally control how it's gonna end out, which makes it kind of interesting. But we're going to check now and see what the temperature of the oil is. Wow, that went up there quite fast. It's already up to 360. So I'll turn my heat down a little bit to get it back down to 350 and then we'll start to fry. So obviously you have to turn your heat up and down a little bit to keep that temperature around the 350 mark. So all right, let's do this. And I'm frying about three or four at a time. So frying them in batches and turning them to cook on both sides until they're golden brown. And I had a couple of forks handy to do that with and I also used some tongs when they're a little difficult to turn. And also for removing them from the pan, the tongs work best. 
Now depending on the size that you cut each of them into as to how many they will make, but about three or four dozen of these. The dough will seem like a very small amount of dough when you first make it, but it does produce quite a few of these pastries because you have to roll it so thin you get quite a few out of it. And it only takes a few seconds on each side so you have to stay right with it, it won't take long. And once they're fried up till they're golden brown like this, then you remove them and place them on some paper towels that I've got on a cookie sheet here. And I'll just let them drain onto the paper towel and cool off completely. So once they're completely cool, take and dust them with some powdered sugar. And I like to do a generous amount of that. So these will be fun to eat because they're crispy and they have nice crunch to them and then you've got the powdered sugar that will just poof out at you. And you'll wear it down the top of your shirt sometimes. But oh well, it's worth it. Store these uncovered. Don't cover them in a airtight container. You want them to stay crisp. You can make this at any time of the year, but they're common at Christmas time in many households across the world. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe and thanks for watching.